What's up cubers, my name is Kenneth. One thing I really like about the Rubik's Cube is that there's so many different ways to solve this puzzle. When you first learn how to solve a Rubik's Cube, you might think that there's maybe only one or two methods for actually solving the puzzle, but there's actually so many. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys 10 different ways to solve a Rubik's Cube, and I'm gonna keep it very high level and talk about these methods. Uh, and if you want more information, definitely look them up. So I'm really hoping that there's at least one or two methods in this list that you guys haven't even heard of. So let's jump in and uh, take a look. So the first method I wanna talk about is the layer by layer method. And this is a very beginner's method and it's a, a method many of you guys are familiar with. And the idea behind the layer by layer method is first you start by solving a layer. And so this is what it would look like solving one layer. All the black pieces would be scrambled. Often this is broken up by first solving kind of a cross like that and then putting these corners in. So once you've got that bottom layer, then you move up and you wanna solve this middle layer. Then with the middle layer done, all that's remaining, it would be the last layer uh, and often on the top. So then you've got one layer left and then there's lots of ways to do this and it, there's so many different variations where maybe you orient the pieces first and then you permute them uh, or maybe you solve the corners first and then solve the edges. Uh, and there's probably an edges first, corners first permutation as well. But eventually you solve that last layer and guess what? It looks like this, it's a solved cube. So the second method is a corners first method and to solve corners first, you would often solve one layer's corners. So you would solve these four corners uh, and then you would turn around and probably permute the corners, put them in the right place, then orient them and then you would have all the corners solved on a Rubik's cube. From there, you would then solve the edges and the edges actually will go in pretty easily. You can use kind of an M slice, uh, up slice, as well as uh, you doing rights and lefts, as long as you don't screw up uh, this layer's corners and this layer's corners, you can do that and solve most of the edges very easily. Uh, the final edges aren't so bad. There's some easy algorithms to orient the uh, the final corners, as well as uh, permuting the last like four corners. So it's not a very difficult method. It's a, I think it's a good beginner's method. Uh, and yeah, so that's corners first. So the next method I'm gonna talk about is the Petrus method, which was invented by Lars Petrus. And this method is a speed method and it's really unique because it's very intuitive. Uh, it's a very popular method. So uh, this method, what you first do is you first solve the, a kind of like a, a two by two by one uh, and you get it here and you can quickly extend that to be a two by two by two. So then you've got this two by two by two, the rest of the cube is scrambled, and then you can extend this two by two any direction, this way, you can extend it this way or this way to make a two by two by three. So once your two by two by three block is finished, then what you wanna do is uh, with the remaining two layers is you wanna orient all the remaining edges. It's actually pretty easy to orient them and once you've done that, it's gonna make the rest of the solve uh, a lot easier. So after they're oriented, then you wanna solve uh, another two by two by one block and uh, it'll look like this. So now it's looking a little bit familiar to uh, people who know CFOP because all you got left is one uh, kind of F2L pair remaining. And obviously when you're doing this, you've already went through all the work to orient the edges. As you build this block and the final F2L pair, you have to be sure to preserve the orientation of the edges, but it's actually kind of nice because then you don't have to use cube rotations to solve these pieces. And so it, it, that actually helps quite a bit. So once you get the last pair in, you finish the first two layers uh, of the cube and you've also oriented the edges of the last layer. All that's remaining is solving the last layer and you can do that by orienting the corners, permuting the top layer, and then you've solved the cube using Petrus. So the next method I wanna talk about is CFOP, uh, or also known as Friedrich method, uh, which was popularized by Jessica Friedrich. This method is extremely popular. Most of you guys know about it. CFOP is an acronym, so the C stands for cross. So first you kind of build this cross. Uh, the F stands for F2L. Uh, once this cross is built, then you wanna pair up corners and edges and put them in these kind of slots here. Uh, that will give you the first two layers solved. And then finally you have O, which stands for orientation of the last layer, O-L-L. And then you wanna basically make, if it, you solved it like this with the white on the bottom, you make yellow on top. It doesn't matter kind of what these stickers are, that's O-L-L. And then you wanna do your P-L-L, permutation of the last layer, where you move these pieces around to solve the cube. That's CFOP, very popular, lots of different variations for 
uh, maybe solving the first kind of pair with the cross or solving, uh, orienting the last layer with the final pair. There's like these different variations to improve. Um, but yeah, very popular method. Some of the fastest cubers in the world use CFOP. Uh, and yeah, let's move on to the next method. So the next method I want to talk about is the Waterman method, which is kind of a derivative of corners first. And it was invented by Mark Waterman. And this is actually the method closest to the way I solve the Rubik's cube. But first, what you want to do is you want to solve uh, one layer minus an edge. And often you would do that corners first, and then you bring in three edges. And then it, the, the puzzle would look like that. Then you would keep that kind of on your left hand. And on your right hand, you would use CLL to solve uh, the remaining corners. So then once you've got those corners solved, you would uh, then use this kind of keyhole to place in these edges. And it would look something like this. Once you put two edges in on the opposite side, then you want to solve the third edge and this final edge at the same time. So it would look something like that. And then you have this edge and the remaining four edges in the middle layer. And what you do at this point is there's an algorithm set. I think there's like 12 or 13 algorithms where you uh, put the final corner in on this side as well as orienting the middle layer edges. And so uh, that I believe wouldn't be too hard, something I don't know. Uh, but if I would learn it, it would get you to here. And then all that would be remaining is to kind of permute the middle layer and then you've solved the cube so that's the waterman method so the next method is row the first step in row is you want to solve a one by two by three kind of block like this uh, and that would be kind of often on the left side then what you want to do is solve a one by two by three block on the right side and you can move the middle layer uh, all you want because all you really care about is this kind of group here and a group on this side so then it'll look like this where you have kind of this group on this side and that group on that side. And you're still using a lot of these kind of M moves and up moves. And at that point, you then use uh, CLL to solve these corners. There's 42 algorithms. It's actually, I think, CMLL because it can destroy kind of these edges down here as well as solve the corners. So you don't really have to keep those intact. You solve the corners all in one algorithm. So then with these corners solved, all you have left are these six edges. You have the four on top and then two on the bottom. Or another way to look at it is you have all the M layer and then you have these two as well. So then what you need to do is first orient those edges. It's not so bad to orient them. And once they're oriented, then you can permute them. Again, it's not that difficult to permute. And yeah, then you've solved uh, kind of the cube using row. So the next method I want to talk about is ZZ. Now the ZZ method is a really unique and cool method. And what makes it so unique is the first step. The first step, you need to orient all the edges on the whole cube. Now that sounds scary because it's hard to know, like, you know, is this edge oriented or not? How do you know? Once you figure that out, it's actually really easy to orient the edges and you can orient all the edges on the entire cube. And you also want to actually solve this edge and this edge. That way you have this kind of line on the bottom. So once you've done that, you've really kind of set yourself up because now all you have to do is left, uh, right, and up moves, and you can solve the rest of the cube without any cube rotations, which is really cool. Then what you want to do is you want to kind of use uh, the same techniques that you, you might know from CFOP or from uh, Petrus to kind of build out and finish the first two layers without doing any cube rotations. Then all you have left is the last layer, but you've already oriented the edges. So the last layer is a little bit easier uh, and you can do it a little more efficiently. So anyway, that's ZZ. There's, I know, a couple other variations. I know there's ZZCT, which Andrew uses from Colorful Pockets. He has some videos about that. So if you're interested about that, definitely check out his videos. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to his video on that. So the remaining methods, admittedly, I don't know much about. So I'm going to go through them quickly. Uh, and I'm going to start with the next two, which are actually methods for computers. Uh, the first one, I believe, is called the Thistleweight uh, method. And like I said, I don't even know if I'm saying it right. Uh, but this method is for a computer to solve a... Uh, a cube efficiently. Um, but what's interesting about this method is there is a, uh, a kind of variation of it called the human thistle weight method. And this is one a human could actually learn and solve a cube with. And people have learned it and solved it 
with this method. The interesting thing about it though is that the last step actually will permute all the pieces using uh, only 180 degree turns, which I think is really cool, really unique. The next method is also a method only really used by computers and it's called the two phase algorithm, which is used by the Cube Explorer pro program, which you can use to uh, come up with your own algorithms and uh, kind of explore the cube. So yeah, this is another method I don't know anything about except for it uses two phases. And you can go Google it uh, and you know, I, I, it's a very efficient method. I believe uh, on average it solves it in like 22 moves. Uh, so it's very cool, so you can go check it out. And the final method I wanna talk about is a blind method, uh, Old Pachman made by Stefan Pachman. Uh, this is a, a blindfolding method. Uh, I don't know too much about it because I, I don't know how to solve a cube blindfolded, but uh, I believe what you do is you memorize the cube, obviously, and then uh, you kind of figure out what are the cycles that, that you need to do, like this corner belongs here, and this corner belongs here, and this corner belongs here, and then what you do is you uh, can swap them in order to get them all solved, and then you can solve the edges in the same way. You can swap the edges around. Uh, and so, yeah, so it's, it's kind of a method to solve blindfolding. If you want to learn it, uh, if you want to learn how to solve blind, then you want to learn old Pachman. Uh, there's also a variation of that, I believe M2, which, uh, allows you to swap the edges with, uh, M2 moves. You get one here and one here and you swap them and then you get the next one, you put it here and then you swap them and then, uh, you, you solve the cycles of edges in that way. So yeah, that's 10 different methods and different variations. Uh, if you include the variations, there's more. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this long video about so many different methods. Uh, I'm curious, what method do you guys use? What method do you guys want to learn? Uh, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to put this in my Cube Theory 101 playlist. So if you guys want to know more about kind of general stuff about the cube, uh, check out the rest of the playlist uh, on Cube Theory. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks guys so much for watching. And of course, have a great day.